Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at uh, CD4049 which is a CMOS hex inverter um, so it's six knot gates if you like uh, these sort of not the Schmidt, Schmidt trigger sort They're just the plain old knot gates um, and we're going to uh, make some waves so um, let's start by having a look at uh, what this chip actually is 4049 then is a CMOS hex inverter. Don't confuse it with um, some other CMOS chips. Um, mainly the um, thing that's uh, quite easy to catch you out here is that uh, uh, the positive supply is actually on pin 1. Very often it's on uh, the top left hand pin as you look at the chips like that and the 0 volts is at the bottom right but in this case it's not. Um, pins 13 and 16 are not connected uh, and the gates are the opposite way around to some um, 4049 uh, sorry some CMOS inverter chips so just just be aware of that uh, otherwise it's relatively um, uh, conventional um, six gates and each gate has a circuit like so this is taken from the TI data sheet so it's uh, complementary um, MOS circuit, fairly standard thing for inversion. Okay, so first circuit we're going to look at then is a phase shift oscillator. We're going to make use of three gates. Um, for clarity, I'm not showing a power supply to um, pins 1 and 8, but they are uh, safely assumed that they're there for it to work. So we've got three gates. In this case, I'm going to use the three gates on the lower side of the chip. Um, and we've got that feedback network and we've got the three sets of uh, um, phase changing capacitors uh, we've looked at this in my oscillator series as well where we looked at uh, phase shift oscillators but we'll uh, we'll look at the output and we'll compare it we'll compare the phase at the um, at the input of each gate and see what we've got um, and I think yeah it's also fair to say with um, CMOS chips don't leave the um, inputs floating so I'm going to show two circuits today so we'll just look at um, this one for now although the other circuit is built on the other half of the chip which conveniently means the inputs aren't floating so on the uh, breadboard this is uh, very straightforward uh, we've got um, three resistors and three capacitors there and if you want to change the frequency uh, it's relatively easy to do it's controlled by 3.3 times the resistance times the capacitance and then you take the reciprocal of that and that uh, that gives you the frequency so here I'm using um, 22 nanofarad capacitors and 4, 4k7 resistors so that should give us just over over 2 kilohertz so, so let's go and have a look at that circuit on the bench okay here's circuit one set up on the breadboard then and uh, it's this particular top half of the circuit we're using as we said so currently I've got the output here on this purple wire going um, to uh, channel one of my oscilloscope uh, down here I've got an earth connection for the um, uh, frequency counter so we can also uh, check the frequency this is producing and the oscilloscope earth is down there and this is a supply voltage coming in here and I've also got uh, the orange wire going to another uh, part of the um, the circuit so we can compare phase in a moment so let's start by looking at the the trace and the top trace here is uh, uh, what's coming out of the scope it's just just over um, four kilohertz according to the uh, frequency counter so uh, yeah give you some idea of bits of I'll put a screen grab of the frequency counter on so you can see that because it keeps moving about but you get the general idea so now let's switch on the second trace and what we're seeing there is the input um, to the first gate and you can see there's definitely a phase shift if I move along to the second gate like so we should get a, yeah, a different phase shift so yep there you go that's the um, phase being shifted by uh, the capacitors so nice uh, straightforward circuit and I think the only other thing to, to note is if I go back to single trace so it's clear um, we can certainly see the 
classic charge discharge curve on those waveforms. If I move that down and increase the um, height of the trace for you, uh, let's just yeah, you can see it is most definitely not a straight line uh, either of them. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's uh, phase shift oscillator using the uh, 4049. Right, let's go back um, to the slides for a moment and have a look at the second circuit. Okay, well that was the um, phase shift oscillator, so let's now use the other three gates on that chip um, to a slightly different end because it is possible to produce feedback uh, uh, a great deal uh, more easily than just using um, phase shift, although uh, We'll, that will end will end up producing a square square wave in this case so here we've got um, a superficially similar circuit is slightly different uh, output one taken from the first two gates uh, should produce a square wave and uh, output two we've got um, something else going on there which uh, should result in uh, in us producing uh, some kind of semblance of a of a triangular wave um, and I've just simply built this on the opposite side of the chip so it looks rather like that. Apologies for the rather large um, capacitors, they were just the ones I had at that particular value and uh, so we've got the output 1 is on pin 4 and output 2 is on pin 6. Right, let's go and have a look at that on the bench. Okay, so circuit 2 uh, as we've just seen is uh, gives us a dual output so I'm now using the gates on the um, lower side of the chip here so I've got uh, yellow wire is running off to the um, uh, top trace on the scope uh, orange wire running off to the um, to the second trace uh, and other, otherwise it's uh, it's exactly the same and uh, we've got uh, the uh, frequency counter attached to to trace one so I'll uh, uh, grab a photo of that and pop that on so that's the frequency there just over uh, 4.3 um, kilohertz according to the frequency counter it's been on for about 20 minutes so it should be reasonably accurate so here's the square wave output and uh, as you can see we haven't got an equal mark uh, space ratio um, if I just extend the time base you can see the um, uh, it's high a lot for a lot longer than it is low, but we could um, fiddle about with the resistors and sort that out should we so desire. Um, so now let's uh, go to dual trace and have a look what's coming out of that uh, that third gate. And we can see we have got a well, it's a set of triangular shaped pulses really. And if um, if I up the uh, volts per division, you can uh, get an idea of the. Uh, shape and we've certainly got some uh, capacitor discharge charge uh, uh, going on there too. Um, yeah so that's uh, a very different type of oscillation being produced from the uh, circuit in the case of um, output one and then we've generated our uh, triangle wave um, or output two. So there we go that's dual output oscillator with the 4049. Okay, a little bit of uh, fun there with a, a knot gate, making uh, a few waves. Hope you've uh, found that interesting. Um, they're quite uh, useful little circuits and uh, capable of producing some uh, interesting waveforms should you need them. Um, thanks very much for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video.